It took me 23 days to come from Philadelphia here to Pittsburgh. Now it'll take only five days to get back home. With this new main line, Philadelphia's ports will again prosper, quite possibly overtaking New York. Certainly Baltimore won't have a chance. I tell you, my friends, people moving west will come through our fine state of Pennsylvania, and that will be good for every man, woman, child, and town along the new main line canal. I just can't wait. The main line will surely bring us a better selection of hats and dresses, and perhaps a new preacher. Just after the spring thaw in March 1834, the Allegheny Portage Railroad opened for business. I bet it was for a month before there were handbills posted everywhere talking about the fast new service and low toll. Why, even the local newspapers came out ahead of time so they could inform their readers all about it. And by this time, I found me a real good job. Permanent guy, sort of working at the bottom of plane number six. And I was there, and some reporter came over. He asked me what I did. So I told him just how I figured in this plan to get canal boats over the mountain. Excuse me, sir, may I have your name? Edgar West. You see, a uh, boat comes along to Johnstown, and we float around to a railroad car. See, we're using these new sectional canal boats now. Well, sometimes. And they were invented by this fellow, John Doherty and we pull it out of the water with a stationary steam engine. Then we pull it along the long, slow grade to the bottom of an incline, like this one here. And then we hitch them up to a continuous three and a half inch hemp rope that moves on rollers between rails. Now that cable's being pulled by another steam engine at the top of the incline. Once we get the boat up top, we unhitch it. We pull it along the flat summit of the mountain to the next incline, next plane, where it goes up again. And again, <laughs> until, of course, it starts going back down the other side of the mountain. And that's about, oh, 36 miles. That should take from six to 10 hours. Thank you, Mr. West. Much obliged. Now, that's the way things were supposed to work. But you see, we had more than a mile of rope running in a circle, hauling cars up the incline on one side and letting other cars down on the other track to balance a load. But even three and a half inches of the finest Russian hemp could only take so much wear and tear, and tear it did ever so often. Boy, the minute you felt the jolt of that rope breaking, you knew death was rolling toward you. You got out of the way. You hoped everybody else did, too. Some didn't. Death, yeah. Had plenty of time to mourn and think about it. Of course, fear turned business slow for the next week or so. People are amazing, you know? They learn, they adjust, they move forward. And you know what was interesting always? To hear people in mid-journey talk to each other, find out what they was each in for on the second half of their trips. Ah, good afternoon, sir. I trust you've had a pleasant trip so far. Well, the boat is terribly cramped. I mean, a 14-inch plank attached to a wall for a bed. One really can't turn over. Curiously, they take the boards off the walls in the morning to make a dining table. Well, you'll have no relief on the rest of your journey. However, you will have the excitement of riding up the inclines. Uh, and then there's the matter of the Connemar Viaduct. Spectacular arched bridge spanning a river. As you travel over, they stop and let you enjoy the view. Then there's the Staple Bend Tunnel. 900 feet of total darkness. Finally, you go down one last incline, slip back in the water, and the canal takes you right into the center of Pittsburgh. Oh, that's most interesting. Thank you for the information. I've enjoyed speaking with you. Hmm. I, I, I didn't get your name. Oh, uh, Dickens. Charles Dickens. Good day. Whether you're on a pleasure trip or on business or shipping merchandise, everyone recognizes the boldness of what we've done. Outsmarting nature. <laughs> no doubt about it. And then a fella named Roebling comes along and invents an iron braided cable to replace the hemp rope, that thick rope that hauled the boats up the inclines. 
and it wouldn't break. Well, mostly not. And, you know, one of the things I loved, I loved seeing what was being carried on the main line. Mostly, going west was groceries, dry goods, manufactured items, and the like. And coming back east, you find coal, timber, and iron ore, plus flour, bacon, tobacco, whiskey, feathers, wool, cheese. The farmers out west were going from barely making a living to growing real profitable crops. So, so many raw materials were pouring into the east that prices started to go way down. Low enough so everybody could afford a pretty decent life. Even me. <laughs> Even me. There was no stopping progress. Steam locomotive came along but the mule. Out of work. You know, all along the main line, small towns started to spring up where there wasn't even a wide spot in the road before. I heard somebody say Johnstown has grown in population about twice as fast as the rest of Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh's gonna be as big as any eastern city. Ohio is getting populated too. But no matter how fast we operated with all the improvements, there was folks who wanted to do away with the Portage Railroad. And steam locomotives were getting bigger and stronger. So these folks said that a long, easy graded track could be built around the Portage and trains could pull the load straight on through. Well, much as I like my job, I had to agree secretly. By 1854, the Pennsylvania Railroad had put track up around what came to be called Horseshoe Curve and blasted through the Allegheny Mountain summit with the Galitzin Tunnel. And that spelled the end for the Portage Railroad. By 1857, we were just a memory. Funny. First we replace the old-fashioned wagons, then we get replaced by bigger, stronger locomotives. Seems there's always a better way to cross a mountain. Though for a long time we were the better way. We could compete with any canal or transportation in this country. Moving raw materials east, manufactured goods, pioneers with their newfangled ideas out west. We were some kind of solution to some kind of problem we were. See, back then, this country never had very far to look for an original idea. Well, I don't suppose that's ever really changed. <laughs> no, I probably never will. No, I don't suppose there's any problem us folks can't solve. Even if it's as big as a mountain.